This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on relative motion analysis, velocity. It's from chapter 16.5 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hebeler. Today's objectives, you will be able to describe the velocity of a rigid body in terms of translation and rotation components. And you will be able to perform a relative motion velocity analysis of a point on the body. Activities include some applications, We'll go over translation and rotation components of velocity, relative velocity analysis, and we'll do some problem solving. So as this slider block at A moves horizontally to the left with some velocity V sub A, it will cause the link CB right here to rotate counterclockwise. Thus the velocity of B is directed tangent to the circular path, so it will be tangent to CB. Which link is undergoing general plane motion, AB or BC? Well, BC is rotating about a fixed point C, so it's rotating about a fixed axis, so that's not general planar motion. But link AB, well, A is moving back and forth left and right, whereas B is going in a circular path, so it's both translating and rotating. So it's link AB that is undergoing general planar motion. Remember, general planar motion means that the body is undergoing translation and rotation at the same time. Here's a planetary gear system used in many automobile transmissions. By locking or releasing different gears, this system can operate the car at different speeds. How can we relate the angular velocities of the various gears in the system? When a body is subjected to general plane motion, it undergoes a combination of translation and rotation. So here you can see this link AB, and as time moves on, it moves to a new position here. And as you can see, it's translated and rotated. Well, this is equivalent to what you see on the right side here. So link AB in pure translation ends up here in this point A, B prime. And then the fact that it rotated some by some d theta causes it to end up in the position that you see A, B. So point A is called the base point in this analysis. It generally has a known motion. Uh, the X prime, Y prime frame you see here, it's translating with the body, but it does not rotate. So we can write that the displacement of point B can be written uh, d r b is equal to d r a plus d r of b with respect to a. Again, notice the subscript, it's b a b over a. So this term is the displacement due to translation and rotation. This term is only due purely to translation. This term is displacement due to rotation. And this equation came from the vector addition of drb is equal to dra plus drb with respect to a. So here's a graphic of that. Uh, you can see this is the translational part of the motion, and here's the rotational part of the motion. So I'll write down that equation again. It was drb is equal to dra plus dr. B with respect to A. Now I can take the derivative of this equation and come up with the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity of B with respect to A. And that should look familiar to you. That's the relative velocity equation for a particle. Now since in my analysis I'm assuming that A is in pure translation and the link AB is rotating about the point A, the velocity of B with respect to A is omega cross R of B with respect to A. So there's our equation. This is the one that we'll use many times. So here we can write that the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of A plus omega cross R B with respect to A. So when using this equation, points A and B should generally be points on the body with a known motion. Often these points are pen connections and linkages. For example, in this problem right here, we know that the velocity of B is 
it's going to be tangent to the circle about C. And the velocity of A, we know is going to be in the I direction. And here we can see that a little better. The velocity of B is a vector and it is 45 degrees. And A is moving purely in the X direction. Engineers use wheels a lot, so this is a special case. When a wheel rolls without slipping, point A is often selected to be the point of contact with the ground. Now since there's no slipping, the velocity of A is zero. And that may cause you to think there, but think about it. The wheel's rolling without slipping. Point A is in contact with the ground. The ground's not moving, so therefore the velocity of A, since it's not slipping, must also be zero. Furthermore, the point D, the center of the wheel, moves with some velocity that's equal to omega times the radius of the wheel. And the velocity of B has a known direction. It's always parallel to the ground. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. First, establish a fixed xy coordinate direction. Draw the kinematic diagram of the body, showing the vectors VA, VB, RB with respect to A, and omega. If you don't know the magnitudes, you can assume the sense of direction. Express the vectors in Cartesian vector forms, that means i, j, k, and substitute them into our equation. Then you evaluate the cross product and equate respective i and j components to obtain two scalar equations. If the solution yields a negative answer, the sense of the direction of the vector is opposite to that assumed. So here's an example. Roller A is moving to the right at 3 meters per second. Find the velocity of B at the instant when theta equals 30 degrees. So our plan is to establish a coordinate system, draw a kinematic diagram, express each of the velocity vectors for A and B in terms of their i, j, k components, and solve our equation. So here's the kinematic diagram. We show the velocity of B here, the velocity of A, the angles, here's omega, and here's R of B with respect to A. So let's write down our equation, the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of A plus omega cross R B with respect to A. Okay, so the velocity of B, we know it's in the J direction. And even though it's drawn here in the negative j direction, I always assume that it's positive and let the signs work themselves out. So, so velocity of b is in the j direction is equal to the velocity of a, and that was given as 3 meters per second, and that's in the i direction, plus omega. Omega is in the k direction always. Cross r of b with respect to a. So that means I'm standing on a going towards b, so I'm in the second quadrant. So that means the x component is going to be negative that vector and the y component is going to be positive. So I can say 1.5 times minus cosine of 30 in the i plus sine of 30 in the j. So the next step is to evaluate the cross product. Now the way I do this, uh, I say i, j, k, i, j. This is how I get the sense correctly. So i cross j is k, j cross k is i, and k cross i is j. So if you're going to the right, the cross product is positive. j cross i is minus k, i cross k is minus j, and k cross j is minus i. So k cross i is positive j, but I have a negative sign here. So this will be minus 1.5 cosine of 30 times omega. Now the next cross product is k cross j. k cross j is minus i, so this will be minus 1.5 sine of 30 omega. So this means j, this means i. So the next step is to equate the i and j components. So the i component 0 is equal to 3 minus 1.5 sine of 30 omega. So from this I can get that omega is equal to 4 radians per second. You equate the j components, the velocity of b is equal to minus 1.5 cosine of 30 times omega which we just found out was 4. So the velocity of b is equal to minus 5.2 meters per second. So since I assumed the velocity of b was positive, it came out negative, that means that b is moving in a negative j direction or downward. Here's another example. 
this crank rotates OA with an angular velocity of 12 radians per second. Find the velocity of piston B and the angular velocity of the rod AB. So our plan is before, we note that uh, point A moves on a circular path, so we know that the velocity of A is going to be in the I direction, and the velocity of B is going to be in the J direction. So here's a kinematic diagram. shows the two velocity vectors, VB and VA. Uh, it also shows the R of B with respect to A. So that will be in the fourth quadrant, because I'm on A looking at B. So let's write down our equation, the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of A plus omega cross R of B with respect to A. So I know the velocity of B is in the J direction, so the velocity of B in the J is equal to the velocity of A. Now the velocity of A is this R times omega, and it's in a minus I direction. So 0.3 times 12 is 3.6, so this is minus 3.6 in the I plus an omega, always in the k direction, cross the vector r of b with respect to a, so that will be 0 0.6 times cosine of 30 in the i minus sine 30 in the j. So let's value that cross product, i, j, k, i, j. So k cross i is positive j, so this will be 0 0.6 cosine 30 omega in the j direction. k cross j is minus i, but there's a minus sign. So a minus and minus is a plus, so this will be plus 0 0.6 sine of 30 omega in the i. Equate i and j components. So in the i direction, I have 0 is equal to minus 3.6 i plus 0 0.6 sine of 30 times omega. So from this we can find out that omega is 12 radians per second. And in the j direction, velocity of b is equal to 0 0.6 cosine 30 times omega, which we just found out was 12. So the velocity of b is 6.24 meters per second. So velocity of B came out positive, so it's in the positive Y direction, so it's moving up. And omega came out positive, so link AB is rotating counterclockwise. Here's another example. The shaper mechanism is designed to give a slow cutting stroke and a quick return to a blade attached to the slider at C. The link AB is rotating counterclockwise at 4 radians per second. Find the velocity of slider block C when theta is equal to 60 degrees. So we note that link AB is rotating by a fixed point A, therefore we know the velocity of B is going to be perpendicular to link AB. And the velocity of C is going to be in the x direction. So let's write down our equation velocity of B is equal to velocity of C plus omega cross R of B with respect to C. So the velocity of B is going to be uh, angular velocity times the length of AB. So it's going to be 4 times 300. And the velocity of B is in the second quadrant, so the I component is going to be negative. So that's minus sine of 60 in the I plus cosine 60 in the J. It equals the velocity of C, which we know is in the I direction plus omega, which is k direction, crossed with 125 times cosine of 45 minus sine 45 in j. So to evaluate the cross product, so I'm going to rewrite the right side of this equation, velocity c in the i. Now k cross i is positive j, so this would be plus 125 cosine 45 in the j. k cross j is minus i, but I have a minus sign, so it's minus and minus, so it's plus, so this would be plus 125 sine 45 in the i. This part right here equals this part right here. So we gather the i components. 
So in the i direction, we have 1200 times sine of 60 is equal to the velocity of c plus 125 omega sine of 45. And in the j direction, we have 600 is equal to 125 omega times cosine of 45. So from the second equation, we can get that omega is equal to 6.79. And then from this equation right here, substitute in omega 6.79 and find out the velocity of c is 1639 negative. So since velocity of c came out negative, that means that the slider is moving to the left. And omega came out positive. So link BC is rotating counterclockwise. This concludes 16.5 relative motion analysis, velocity. Next, the instantaneous center of zero velocity, chapter 16.6.